hip-hop is a consciousness, a behavior, a way to view the world. Everybody knows music is what makes the world go round. I mean, you come into this world on the beat of the drum, on the heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? You constantly have this beat in you, and you, I mean, that's just, that's just how life is. Every major coming of the manifestation of what you call spirit or God, it's a beat because it's rhythm. Rhythm is what gives the heart. You see, rhythm is the planet. It's rhythm. I think it might be the most powerful vehicle in Ever. the world. Ever made. Because <laughs> it, it has a magical way of touching people. I mean, it's the most listened to music in the world right now. It's the number one. And, and it's music. It's the universal language, and hip hop has trumped music as the universal language. There's no place you can go on earth and not find someone to have a conversation about hip hop at all something about music that moves you so now you have hip-hop and these you know these different people and these different griots telling a story I mean it's you know it's it's like Martin and Malcolm gave birth to a whole generation of of storytellers and leaders and philosophers and, and teachers and I mean it's, it's nothing more beautiful than that. and then they have a way of you know putting it in, in, in it's a music form where you can you know, bobby head to it at the same time, you know what I'm saying? We've mixed up the terms hip hop. And rap, rap being a part of hip hop culture. I once heard, I believe it was KRS-One say, rap is something that you do, hip hop is something that you live. I think that hip hop now is a much more generic term. Hip hop is just, a, it's just the umbrella for all of these different genres of, of rap music. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different genres, you know, from East Coast style to West Coast style to down South to Midwest. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of different styles. Hip hop culture is all about, you know, what's going on. It, it, it stems from, obviously, you know, expression and, 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 and social advocating social change in your environments and so forth. But it still got its pulse from the street. For those of us who know our hip hop history, the, the preacher, the holiness preacher, that, that whole sing song way that they preached a sermon was really the precursor of, of hip hop. That's why, you know, people forget that there's a long line there, that this just didn't come up full blown. Africa Bambada in 1974 uh, began Zulu Nation after his trip back from Africa and was ordained a Zulu uh, chief. He laid down the four principles and the four elements. The four principles are peace, love, unity, and having fun. He later did this, a record on this with James Brown, actually. Uh, with the Universal Zulu Nation, we stand for knowledge, wisdom, understanding, freedom, justice, and equality, peace, unity, love, and having fun, overcoming the negative to the positive, science, mathematics, facts, and the oneness of the supreme force. From those principles, Africa Bambada laid down the core elements, breaking, MCing, graffiti, or DJ. These are the core elements. 
Well, it began in New York in the 70s, in 73, 74, um, in the Bronx with Africa Bambata and Cool Herc. Herc was considered the father of, of um, the DJs because Herc brought the sound from Jamaica. And he learned how to put the brakes on where the brakes were continuous. Africa Bambata brought the culture to hip hop because Cool Herc couldn't have played the records and got away with a lot of parties because it was violent in New York. You're talking about late 1970s. We're talking about right after the black power struggle, after the, and the Panthers and groups like that had been neutralized. We're talking right after civil rights. You see what I'm saying? We're talking a, a, a period when, when, when Poverty was everywhere in America, especially in the black community. Hip in this form of hip hop was born, so it was gangs, violence, drugs, and oppression. It was all these things were around. So Bambada, what he did was he created was from the gang, the Black Spades. He formed what they call the Zulu Nation, or at that time it was called the organization. That was the original name, and it was for all the gangs to get together and no longer wear their colors at the party, but represent as one thing, so that we could have these parties. Later on those that started to stop the violence movement, all in the same gang, human education against lies, blah, 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 blah. We took it further and expanded the four elements to nine elements. Breaking MC and graffiti are DJing, beatboxing, street fashion, street language, street knowledge, and what we call street entrepreneurialism. And the minute you say street entrepreneurialism, most people think, well, that means some illegal activity on a corner. No, it doesn't. It could also mean incense and oils on a corner. It can also mean like what Bill Gates did, dropped out of Harvard and pursued his dream. Me coming up, it was during the golden years, quote unquote. So yeah, I was able to obviously listen to the public enemy, you know, Tribe Car Quest, uh, the whole Native Tongues, you know, Poor Righteous Teachers, Brand Nubian X Clan. Whereas on the flip side, you also had NWA and the Ghetto Boys and Too Short, which, you know, were, were coming with a different spectrum. A lot of people have mentioned, uh, you know, Cool G Rap was Biggie before Biggie. Um, Big Daddy Kane was a 5% of the Nation of Islam Muslim, uh, a pimp, and a, 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 you know, a hustler all in one. You know? So we had the full gamut. We had everything from Public Enemy to Will Smith to De La Soul, and these, these, they would all go on tour together. So you could go to one show and get radical militant black nationalism, you know, fun-loving, heavy D, dancing. Uh, you know, uh, uh, of course, sprinklings of misogyny within all of that. I mean, you know, to be real. You had Queen Latifah, you had Laura Hill, all these places. And hip hop is many different persuasions. You could go from fun type of hip hop to gangster hip hop to, to, to party hip hop. There's a certain beauty in that. I mean, this is what all communities have naturally. So why wouldn't that be express, expressed in their music? When people like Busy B started and Cool Herc and and Africa Bambada and Grandmaster Flash. Imagine every day they were told, in three more years, hip hop is over. In three more years, this thing you doing is over. And they kept pushing and coming out with more and more music, doing more and more moves, this, that, and the other. They told me that in 77. Ah! In 77. So the courage to be yourself is the essence of hip hop. and making sure that you're original and making sure that you're not trying to be somebody else or co co copy somebody else's style. I think hip hop is funky and eccentric and creative and colorful. It's not something you can quit. I can quit rhyming tomorrow, but that doesn't mean that my life isn't going to still revolve around hip hop culture because I, I can't, that's, that's how I grew up. That's what I understand, that's what I live. Hip-hop is the, in my opinion, is the current, uh, current expression 
of, of the younger generation and trying to say, this is my life. The sense of community that it involves and the sense of family and people kind of having each other's backs. I mean, people say, like, to bring people together. And I mean, for me, that's what, you know, for the most part, it does mean to me is bringing people together. I mean, that's what I feel like my whole life has been since I've been involved in the scene in Chicago, is bringing people together. It's like your first kiss, it's like my first mic, it's like your first kid, it's like my first night, since that feel good. Are you ready for flight? This for Inglewood, man, I'm shining a light. So relax yourself, man, come and give me love, and tell them that Pugs is who you're thinking of. And it's okay, somebody wants a dub, cause it's right here, them good times that we love. Not trying to sound corny about it, but um, it, they, it became family. Today, we look at hip hop as a complete livable lifestyle a sustainable culture like any other culture. Hip hop is its own people. Hip hop itself is community. Like right now here in the inner city, the ghetto, that's hip hop. Hip hop is a culture that represents the inner city. So whatever state the inner city is in is what's gonna be represented through the culture. Now if, if hip hop is looking real uh, you know, depleted and off balance, that is a representation or a mirror of what's happening in the inner city. generation sequel psychological effects culture freedom disconnects brainwashing mentals it gets complex their presence gets me vexed hex fragile minds create unknown times uncomfortable with universal harmony down to take control of mother earth straight loss in you're not the boss of me not all successful black poets want to floss be label me artistry longevity Hey man, at 1975, we were at our power as a black people. We, we could have actually jumped forward in our time. And the consciousness came in. You start seeing the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in videos, Malcolm X, Farrakhan in videos. You start hearing about unity, organizing. You start hearing about self-love. You start seeing the African medallions being put on. When hip hop came along, that was our birth for the jump forward. That was our jump. When we started jumping. Well, the main purpose of the cultures when we started was to bring something to our people, the black people. And when I say black people, I'm talking about my Puerto Ricans, Dominicans, other so-called Latinos. I got dreams and aspirations and all I really need is some inspiration. I got dreams and aspirations and all I really need is some inspiration. Too many cats don't get down like that and too many cats will never have your back and too many cats. That's cool. No, I was just, you know. The hip hop when I started out was, was a, a lot about having fun. A lot about saying what was on your mind. It was about being unique and being different. Um, it was all for the craft, all for the art of it. And um, now it's, you know, of course, big business. It's become much more of a business. I call it hip hop, because it's pop music now. And uh, you know, when you look back 10 years ago, 1997, and you know, even before that, you know, early in the mid 90s, and, in the late 80s, you could really see there's a big difference between what was going on in hip hop versus hip hop. When something hits and it pops, then when they oversaturate the hell out of it. Three corporations own and distribute 95% of all the music in the Western world, Universal Music Group, Warner Music Group, and EMI. 
They control what becomes popular by their relationships and ownership of the music. So everything you hear on commercial radio is owned by one of these corporations. The artists never, you, you, you will live and die and never hear an artist on commercial radio that owns his or her own art. They work through a consolidated radio environment and use payola or pay for play to promote and make popular whatever forms of music they want and to omit whatever they want. Uh, DJs used to actually kind of be DJs. They would select records, take them from the shelf, put them on a the turntable. You could actually call and make a real request. And a lot of times these guys would, you know, find a, a song just off the album that might not have been the, the quote unquote single. And they would have just played it because they felt it was good music. When things became much more of a business and institutionalized, that took away all the freedom from DJs. And that, I believe, took some place sometime like in the 70s. So if you hear a song, to make a song go gold, it's been studied that you need 12 weeks of regular top 40 rotation at about $1,000 per song per station or a million and a half dollars for an R&B hit to be made a hit. So what that means is you're hearing the same song every hour on the hour, which means you're not hearing any number of other songs in that same day. Uh, some stations still happen to be independently owned. Those are few and far between. Most of them are owned by you know, major co corporations, whether it be Clear Channel, Cox, Infinity, and the freedom has been slowly taken away from every aspect of the individual station. After Viacom came into the picture and bought out BET and, and, and VH1, MTV, it, it, it seemed as if at that point any music of any uh, with any consciousness kind of got weeded out the picture. I don't know if you saw it or not. Was this last year? when someone had published a list of artists that are banned from being on BET or being represented or having their videos play anything. Really, really long list. I looked down the list. I was like, oh, hey, Jean Grey. I was like, which is odd, being that I don't have a video. But at any point where I decide to put one out, you've already decided, I think the quote was, the quote was that these artists are irrelevant to our audience. And, um, music would be overwhelming. So we already know that these companies are looking at consumers as, you know, cattle. And they're idiots. And whatever we can push them, we can push them. You know, I think part of the problem is that the world has stepped in this box and they forgot to step back out. When it comes to music, who decided that music had to be a certain way? They are able to make us like what we want to like. So Theodore Adorno, the media scholar, said that we, what we think we like is really what we recognize. And DMX said the same thing more recently, that if you, he said if you feed, if you feed people uh, dog shit long enough, they'll learn to put barbecue sauce on it. So. It always happens to us, right? You hear a song the first time, you're like, that's whack. You hear it again, hate this song. Hear it again, I hate this song, but it's got a nice hook. And the next thing you know, you're liking it, and we say it grew on us, when in reality, it was imposed. So like, for instance, now, you can't even get like Little Brother to get played on BET. And I'm sure that a lot of the people, because I've played Little Brother for people that haven't heard of them, and, and a lot of the groups are natural, um, you know, I am Oz, the Prime Meridian, just people that the, the masses may not have heard and they, the people like them, but they're just not breaking through, you know, with the video that everybody's gonna say, oh yeah. So we don't hear the artists who would use their fame and wealth 
as so many great ones have done and paid an ultimate price for. To make change. So Paul Robeson's destroyed. Hazel Scott destroyed. Kenna Lee destroyed. Tupac even posthumously destroyed. Uh, um, Bob Marley destroyed. Peter Tosh destroyed. Anybody who's going to use their art and their fame and their wealth to make fundamental change cannot be allowed to be popular. The consumer, consumer can be taught anything. Consumers are, are made to, to taught to love uh, Britney Spears and, and Katie Holmes and and like Simon Cowell, like, you know, all these people who you probably wouldn't give a damn about, you, you do now. So when all these corporations throw their money into hip hop, they don't run to the artists like Most Def, like Common, like Ron Fest, artists that are spitting political or positive messages or spiritual messages. They go to what they know sells. The culture is following the proper uh, tradition, but you got people that's part of the rap movement that many of the Luciferian corporations are controlling that's um, trying to push what they want to be, they persuasion of what is called hip hop today. Um, again, it was somebody who lived the culture. You could tell by the way they dressed. You could tell by the way they spoke and the words that they used. And today, I don't think that exists as much. Songs are very cliche, like you got a big producer in there saying, hey, let's make a song called um, Lollipop. Lollipop, it's the lollipop. Get lollipop. It's, I think it's a little cliche. It's, I think it's a little overproduced. Like me and him could come out with a record tomorrow. We're the bubblegum boys. The bubblegum boys. The bubblegum, bubblegum, bubblegum boys. The bubblegum boys. <laughs> and people will chew it. You know, even myself, it's some songs I made so much fun of when I first heard it. And then, you know, I found myself. Just saying a couple of the lines. We're the bubblegum boys, the bubblegum boys. We're like, whoa, you know. The bubblegum, bubblegum, bubblegum boys. Because it's been beating, beating my head, you know, from hearing it repetitively. The bubblegum, bubblegum, bubblegum boys. Since about 1996, it's been a decline musically, just on average in general. You know, most, most of the stuff cats are putting out is whack. So you got many of the so-called rappers who are not um, following the whole elements of hip-hop, meaning the b-boys, the b-girls, the DJs, the MCs, the aerosol writers, graffiti writers, and that fifth element that holds it all together, which is the knowledge. In Universal Zulu Nation, we say knowledge, culture, yeah, overstanding. I feel like MCs in general, be it male or uh, female, just are either not interested or just plain afraid of giving their opinion. Because that's what MCing used to be about. It used to be about you stand for something. Like you knew what Chuck D believed. You knew what KRS-One thought. You, you just had, um, you had more of an MC. You, you knew more of you know, what they were about and what they stood for. It's almost like a revolution of bullshit. I'm not knocking anybody's hustle. If you out here getting paid, talking about what you're talking about, fine. You know, you're not the one forcing people to buy it. They're choosing to buy it. Even though you can't say that and not acknowledge the marketing scheme that's involved with that, you can't say that and not acknowledge how almost every item is being marketed with hip hop. And in the face of hip hop, it's some dude with a fitted hat broke off, a three or four big ass chains, you know, uh, talking about some bullshit. It's children out here that follow that and they listen to that and they emulate that. You know, be six, seven graders walk around talking about Bird Gang, walk around talking about GD, Blackstone, whatever, just because they want to relate so bad to what they listening to. I'm not knocking anybody that does it, but I am saying that it needs to be more than that one-sided presentation. Very few MCs that come hard like that, or quote unquote hard like that, actually change it up. Everybody now is everybody talks about the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh the, the jewels, the 20s on the rims, you know what I mean? Back then it was just about lyrics, you know what I'm saying? Who had skills, who could flow. Now it's like anybody can get a deal, you, you know what I mean? It's bling bling and, you know, Chris Dow this, Chris Dow that, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's like I'm tired of hearing that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So to me, it's like back with the raw skills, who can really flow? You know what I'm saying? And who's telling the truth? Because a lot of you guys don't tell the truth. I'm not saying you y'all bad rappers. I'm not saying that y'all are bad people. I'm saying you're being controlled and you're being lied to and you're lying to others. That's right. So stop that because you know better. 
Why y'all suckers keep making that garbage music, gaining money and the fame? Plus I see they lose it, lose the true essence. In addition to them adults that trade they soul for platinum and gold, drugs and rock and roll. Let's take a poll. How many cats got jewelry ice cold but got their life on hold? Don't even know the story untold and handle they be out under religious mind control. Pretending that y'all paid, pimps and getting laid, drinking Bellevue in the shade. Our problem is we're stressed out and we're broke. The whole culture of hip hop. I've been preaching this since the stop, since 89 really with the self-destruction record, Stop the Violence Movement. That was huge. It was. You know, self-destruction was huge. It was hip hop, we are and the world. It was, it was a hip hop, we are the world. And I think now, it, you know, back then, they were into making hit artists. They wanted to make you a fan of an artist, and I'm talking about the record labels now. Now, they want a hit song. They want a hit song because they don't want all the power for the people. They don't want an artist who can come in there, wreck shop, and then make a choice like, I'm going to teach the people. That would be devastating to them. What you see on television is a lie. No disrespect to people like Master P, who I think is really did the South some justice, Juvenile, who his first record, um, You a Paper Chaser, You Got Your Block On, I love, it. those records are, are it for me. Those are classics, and those artists are great. But when you discuss leadership, and not singling Master P out, but he's from New Orleans that no longer exists. I've been trying to express the truth about hip hop. We are impoverished people. We are in poverty. You may see us on TV with blinged out watches and this and that, but that's an act. That's a joke. When Katrina hit, you saw the real hip hop culture in trouble. All them people bought up all our records, lived the culture out. You could turn on tele, you could turn on BET and see what New Orleans was like before Katrina. You hear Katrina say, they're shooting at the cops. They've been shooting at the cops for 30 years in New Orleans. Katrina ain't starting nothing new, but now it's exposed. The image is gold teeth. The image is buy this, buy that, wear the biggest watch. You see? Nigga, drink that crystals. You see, matter of fact, everybody's a nigga now. White people, everybody just niggas, niggas. You know, this is the nigga, nigga. Super niggas, you know? Now everybody bleeding out. The imagery is thug life. Everybody's a thug. True. Put the true on there. What does the TRU mean on you? What is true with the machine gun on me or the Uzi? What is that? That's thug life. Thug life is telling you, Tupac says thug is an intelligence. Of, no, that's not what thug life is. The word thug is king, it's English. It was created with word sound and word sound is power. When they call you a thug, it means an assassin. You are you assassinating? Your own character. So now you're a thug. Your mentality is a thug. Thug mean I don't give a fuck. I don't care about nothing, G. I don't, look, I don't care. I'm going out. I was born to die. Something happened. They started coming in the so-called nigger syndrome or calling the women out of their names using that B word or glorifying the N word. And what's going platinum is the jail industry. More prison dollars are being implicated. They just gave almost another billion dollars towards prisons in America, but they didn't give a dollar towards schools in America. Do you see what I'm saying? The, the worst is schools and the best is prisons, you see? What's, how do you fuel the prison industry? You fuel it with niggas. It's an economy. It's a, it's a commodity and an economy. The slaves were brought here as a commodity. We were never brought here because of an evil scheme to do to. No, we were brought here to work. And they no longer needed your services to work. Now they no longer you need you to wake up and catch who you are and take over or begin to be industrial. So now we have to create a new form of work. The new form of work is called the prison industrial complex. How do we walk them to prison? Through imagery, through music frequencies and industry. That we have the largest prison population in the world, that um, more, the 40% of that population is black. Uh, 
70% uh, of that population is black and Latino, all of them are poor, 80% are there for nonviolent drug offenses, and that the prison industrial complex is the underpinning basis of this economy. If you study the 1940s, in the 1940s when jazz came along, they did jazz the same way. Same thing. They put heroin on the streets of America. It took out the Charlie Parkers, the Max Roaches. It took out the, the John Coltrane's, the Billie Holidays. It took out everybody, the unseen heroes and sheroes that you never even heard about that sung jazz. It took them out. So to justify all of that, you need a popular image of black people that makes people feel okay with so many going to prison for, for really nonsense. Um, or to really reinscribe. This is why a lot of people talk about this as being part of the DNA of this society. That the historical relationship between black people in this country has always been one of pure entertainment, of um, cultural appropriation and theft. I have a tattoo that says Thug Life. You can see it because it, yeah. yeah. And I got that because of Tupac, of course. And I remember Tupac before he was born because we were aware of Effendi. We were aware his mother was a, a panther and we were aware of the pressures that uh, she was under. And we were aware of the fact that she got beaten. And uh, if the jailers had had their way, he would have never been born. So I always appreciated him as he came, as he was born. And then you got to watch when he's a charismatic, good looking kid, sweetheart, really, a nice, nice young man, extremely talented. And as Tupac himself said, you know, everybody in Hollywood owes him because he was the one, he was the anti Sidney Poitier. We finally, and I love Sidney, but we finally had somebody who was not a good person. We finally had a black guy who was a hellraiser. He was an outlaw. It's no, it's no coincidence that he left Pelican Bay prison and died on death row records. Wow, that's deep. In less than a year's time. Somebody killed him. Somebody killed John Master J. And 50 blew up. Y'all not watching what's going on? Big happened to be caught in the game. Nobody ever investigate the rapper's deaths. What happened to him? But as long as black people keep creating things, people are going to keep trying to tear it down. The, the question, what is hip hop? is the same question, what are spirituals? Nobody says what's classical music. Nobody really says what's pop, right? Nobody questions the Osmond brothers, who were just really a white toast uh, trying to be Jackson 5. But all of a sudden, they have a right to see Jackson 5. Like, oh, are they really black singers? Look, did you see him lately? Forgetting that Michael now is crazy, but he wasn't always. Or if he was, we didn't always know it. I Man, I was watching the news the other day, and they really had some uh, ignorant niggas on there. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a lot of ignorance being promoted in it, man. I, I, I was trying to <laughs> mince my words and make it, say it sound cool, but it's pretty ignorant, man. And so I, I don't think morally it's helping at all. It's, it's pretty degrading. We um, look like idiots. I call it, I, I call it, uh, I was talking to a friend of mine, like I feel like we're in this neo-coon era, is what I call it, you know? It's like, you know, it's neo-coonery. It's like, okay, yeah, we're doing the same stuff. We're oogling our eyes and smiling our teeth or whatever, and we're doing it now, but at least we're getting paid for it, you know? The pressure, I guess, of, of just, you know, being financially stable, you know, within a lot of black, excuse me, wealthy entrepreneurs plays heavier than trying to help the people and try to, like, really get something of our own that we can claim. We live in a, a capitalistic economy, so, Survival of the fittest. Shoot, that was a Mob Deep song, right? You know, uh, we live in this city, the day that we die. Survival of the fittest, only the strong survive. Which actually is a very classic album. I love that album. But uh, at the same time, the message that's being that's being preached and being you know uh, rooted in our minds is that whatever you got to do to get that dough, get that dough. We need peace and prosperity. This is the focus that we should be on, the balance between peace and prosperity. Some people have peace, no prosperity. Some people have much prosperity, no peace. Time we we want to teach our children Time peace and prosperity. It's cool to like, like I say, be street, be hip, and this and that, you know what I'm saying? That's all good, but you gotta understand, man, that we got these kids looking at us. But it's just time for Miss Robinsons and the Big Mamas to come back and 
and help raise the community because we don't have fathers in every home and and these kids need to know there's a there's a, a consequence for all your actions whether good or bad you get good consequences you get bad consequences it's just time to reinforce and remind the community that it's you know good people out here like in the black community most of us grew up fatherless, you know what I'm saying? Not all of us, but most, a lot of us in the hood did, you know what I'm saying? And hip hop is no different. The, the fathers, the fathers of hip hop, they somehow got detached from the sons, you know what I'm saying? The sons, the new guys of hip hop, somehow don't respect the old school for some reason. I, you know what I'm saying? Like every other genre of music respects their old school and their traditional and people who did things before them that made it, you know what I'm saying? They talk rock and roll, any other kind, but hip hop for some reason, they do, but they don't, you know what I'm saying? They've been tricked into thinking, uh, just like the men, you know, the men feel as though they aren't um, enough for the video, so they have to put this other entertainment in it. And the same thing with women, they feel as though what they have to say and give is not enough. So let me give of something else. And um, it's really sad, and I want the next generation coming up to completely understand that that's a cop out to me. You can, you can be more and give more without that. And there's a certain things being sexy, you know, but then there's also just being raunchy. And I think it's important that we, as people know the difference, and as women know the difference. Pushing good, what was they talking about? What was they pushing, cocaine, reefer, backgammon chips? What were they pushing? Policies, votes, no, they was pushing that thing, girl. They was wiggling that thing. Y'all like to do that shit. So. Also, too, you got to think about when you create music, the responsibility of, of the message. I got a responsibility. I don't know about what other people have, like me. I got a responsibility for me being like on TV, for me being in magazines and this and that. Little kids are looking up to me. So whenever I get in front of the camera, I'm not gonna be on the camera like, oh, motherfucker, oh yeah. Now I'm gonna speak intelligent and try to, you know what I'm saying, let them know being intelligent is cool. That's gangster, you know what I'm saying? Go against the grain, finish school, get your high school diploma, you know what I'm saying? At least get a GED, you know what I'm saying? It's talking about sex, it was like, but he never even know who he's sexing. And I said, well, I said, let me talk, let me tell y'all about some real sex. Let's talk about the first thing in sex. Hygiene. And we went there. And I told us, you see the little jeans you got on? That's funky. That was not made for you. I would explain about the external and the internal or the organs. See what I'm saying? We don't talk to our children about that. Imagine if hip hop started doing that. Wow. I think hip hop now is 40, is over 40 years old, whether people will realize it or want to accept it or not. So hip hop remains young and juvenile. All you can talk about is sex and love. Anything that doesn't touch the surface of a mature 40 year old conversation other than relationships. You know, I come from the day where you were talented enough that you didn't need seven, 15 women in a video shaking their butt for people to watch. And that's what happens. And these rappers are insecure. They're not enough, so let me put something else in this video. So I think as the new hip hop generation, you're actually being cheated. Hip hop in general is no different than it's ever been. The biggest, the only real difference is that media technology, consolidation of media ownership, uh, and the powers that be catching up politically to what hip hop was doing uh, have made hip hop only known by its most popular form. And that popular form has been intentionally selected to be the club stuff, the booty stuff, the pimp stuff, the bling stuff, the self-directed violent stuff, community self-directed violent stuff. And hip hop is not being allowed to mature and address social issues like we used to be able to. Because now we have a lot of unusual stipulations when this was supposed to be freedom of speech. Um, but hip hop in reality is the same that it's ever been. There's so much stuff out there, uh, political, uh, radical, revolutionary even, uh, even just fun loving and not harmful. Uh, but that music mostly is intentionally omitted or ignored. If we see what happened to Kanye West. All he really said is that Bush don't like black people. That's nothing compared to what we really want to say. We want to say, there's a lot of things going on. We want to talk about this false war. We want to talk about the fact that Bush is not really the man in charge of somebody else using him as a mask. The political point of hip hop is to be able to think freely. Meaning, do I really have to dress like you to get a job? 
Do I really have to talk like you to get a, to eat and feed my family? Do I have to go to your schools? Really? Or can we open our own schools? Of course, with the with the with the '90s uh, and the the burgeoning radicalism and the popularity of black radicalism within white communities, I think made the industry and its true controllers and owners look at this and say, we have to get involved here. We can't have white people and black people coalescing on the basis of radical politics. We can't have international audiences filled to capacity listening to public enemies say fight the power with their fists up, white people, fists in the air. That reminded them, of course, of the 60s and 70s where people like the Panthers had uh, you know, Fred Hampton had the, the you know, uh, uh, white folks from Appalachian Hills putting on berets and calling themselves young patriots and putting their fists up. There's a force that's at work to bring about the, the, the demise of the black community. The hip hop culture in America is largely black. It started from black culture, from the ghetto. And a lot of people want to destroy that. You know what I mean? We, we roused up again. We said, say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. We made music that said stand. This music was so powerful. The music said stand. The music said thank you for letting me be myself. You see, the music told about black power, black pride, what's going on. Marvin Gaye wrote a Rasta song, what's going on? When he came back from Jamaica, he had still went up to Jamaica where Bob and him was at. When he came back, he was he had a red, black, and green tam on. He was singing, what's going on? Marvin Gaye. When, they, when the media and the control forces that control this conglomerate or this, this force that keeps this negativity on us and this planet, when this force saw the birth and resurrection of music and sound waves, they are afraid of the rise of the black messiah. That image, I'm sure, frightened them. So they said, well, we know white people have always traditionally gravitated to what black people do, so we just have to make that co co coalescence exist on the basis of what it is now, blinging and pimping. So white and black people can hang out now, but they're all blinging and pimping and you know fronts and all of that. And that kind of unity is okay, because that's not really a threat. We doing too much blinging. You know what I'm saying? I'm not knocking because blinging has been since Biggie was here. I mean, back when Biggie them and everybody been blinging. Everybody was talking about blinging and rims and but we got lost in it. We forgot what we was here for. Now, what do we do about hip hop? Well, where we gonna go with it next? Cause it's shit hop now, so what's next? Do we change the frequency? Cause right now we on a four four count or a three four count. When we should be on a six eight. Six eight will bring us back to our, ry our rhythmic harmony. It will bring us back to the sound of the church. It'll bring us back to the sound of the drums. It'll react our spirits and align our chakras. Because our music made our deal. When I say hip, hop, the hip to the hip, everybody smile and do like this. Because that's the type of music that was. It made you feel like this. Because that was the frequency of the music. How do we return to this? Elevate the music you produce. Following the tight, we package plan, shake it loose. Pop, pop, excessive numb radio, and it don't stop. When them chicken come home to roost, you wondering where's the motivation and the boost? So watch what you say, organize, obey, be true to yourself. Take care of your health, stack your wealth. Expression for hire, inspire, catch a fire. My contributions, I always take you higher, higher, higher. But for higher. example, okay. You have a guy uh, that was raised in our area, Kanye West, who's bringing records with, you know, orchestration, you know, just like just new levels of musicality. Um, and not to say all his stuff is positive either, it ain't. Um, but I think it's representation of where, you know, of, of hip hop, uh, where, the, where the streets are, but still adding in there some sense of consciousness. That's one of the things that makes Kanye West important because he, he brought back another way of looking at hip hop. He said, I'm not gonna play this game that, uh, you know, I was rapist and I used to sell drugs and I shot my mother and father, you know, and all that just old slave narrative that everybody seems to want to tell and I don't believe half of them, you know, because not that many people survive those streets. <laughs> you know, you look at, I was shot eight times, well, I was shot 10 times, well, I was shot 15 times. There's a slave narrative. You know, that's, that's, I learned to read and then I realized I shouldn't be enslaved as if the people that didn't know how to read thought they should be. Come on, you know. It's the, it's the courage to be yourself. 
It's the courage for you to be you. And notice the word courage. Most people ain't being themselves. And, and uh, to, to some degree, and I think it's legitimate, uh, again, intellectual complaint, hip hop needs to stop the slave narrative and get back to this is who I actually am. And Kanye West has made a step because he said, I'm just a nice kid, but I can rap and I'm gonna do that. Hip hop is forever changing. So just when people think that it's done, it sort of, um, sort of breaks out of the mold and does something completely different. So I'm looking forward to the changes. Well, hip hop, like all of the, like all music, once it gets started, it's gonna take on its own life. In order for it to live, it's gonna have to grow and go in different directions. And it's doing just like R&B music did, which eventually R&B had blues and soul, then you had Motown, which started making it sophisticated and pop and then jazz and all that. Hip hop is doing the same thing. If hip hop never existed, man, this world would be, you know, so much worse than what it is right now. I mean, hip hop music made it possible for cats to come from a humble beginning, the street corner, and take it all the way to, you know, an office somewhere. I mean, look at what Jay Z's done. You know, look what Jim Jones has done. You know, these are dudes from, you know, some of the most, you know, terrible places in the world, man. Like, and now. They're successful business people. They help employ people. They took people off the streets and gave them jobs and opportunities. And you know, hip hop made that possible. It also made it possible for, for, for black people to do you know, so much and Latinos to do so much. I mean, you look at the example of Fat Joe, I mean, who has been in this game for, for so long, man. Like, you know, a Latino cat from the streets of New York who, again, is a businessman and who has employed people and given people opportunity. All that came because these individuals picked up a microphone and said, I got something I want to say, you know, and this is how I'm going to say it. Man, it's going to take us to the top of the world we wanted to. You I know think what I'm saying? It's going, it's, it's going to lift everybody up. It's going to make, make everybody, you know, think about the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? That's what it's all about. I mean, we only got so much time on this, on this earth. And, you know, as long as God is blessing us with the time, we need to take advantage of it and, and, and lift the next man and lift the next woman. And, and hip hop is definitely, definitely doing that, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's going to the top. Hip hop is, is going to continue to live and strive and, and evolve. Uh, because there's there's a lot of people that care about it, and, and and also considering the state of our world and the different things going on in the world now, I think there's going to be a time coming soon when we're going to have to we're going to have to step up or step off. And if you're not, you know, changing it or or, or making it easier or teaching someone after you what you're doing, then you shouldn't be doing the shit in the first place. I mean, know where it came from, know where it started, you know, know what, who made it, who created it. Know about the Bronx, know about Cool Herc, know about Cedric Avenue, know about Bronx River, know about Bambada, know about, you know, Grandmaster Cavs. Know. In 87, we look back at 77 and said, wow, that was dull. In 97, they look back at 87 and said, wow, criminal minded and slick Greg, that was hot. Today, they're looking back at 97 Cent, Tupac, Biggie, wow, the, these guys, the Puffy Bad Boy, uh, uh, the West Coast, Dr. Dre, wow, that was hot in 97. In 2017, they're gonna look back on this very interview right here, and they're not really listening to what we say, they're looking at the wall paint, the furniture, my clothing, my hat, yours, how we're sitting here like this. That's what our children are looking at. So if you are conscious of that, every word out your mouth, every act that you do is not for you today, it's for your future. That's leadership for hip hop. Most people, when they say hip hop, they don't understand what they're talking about. When they say hip hop, they just think of rap music or rappers. They should think of the whole culture as a movement. The movement of doing something for self, peace, unity, love, and having fun, and then overcoming our negatives to our positives. 
you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really beautiful thing. There's know? a revolution beginning that, that never went away. It's just waking back up. And I just feel good to be able to witness it because there was a depression point where I'd stopped. I mean, truthfully, I'd stopped buying hip hop because I felt like I wasn't getting what I wanted. But now I'm buying it again. And that, that's what tells me that it's coming back. The revolution of hip hop that existed when it first started. It is us that save us. Hip hop saves us. Now we can take this hip hop thing and, and not with a bunch of people around us, but just a little people in front of us, that little group, we can probably say this. Censorship is political, not lyrical. So when Young Jock got his song removed, Fuck the Police recently, it wasn't because he said fuck, it's because he said fuck the police. And it wasn't even in a revolutionary way. It was, he was saying, I'm a dope dealer and I'm gonna sell dope. And if a cop tries to stop me, I'm gonna shoot him. So imagine if you're saying, I'm gonna protect my community against police brutality, like Hassan Salam did. You're never gonna hear that on the radio, right? So as long as they're selling you products and Mercedes and AK-47s, you will be there all day and all night, all right? So I just wanna make that point very clearly. People looking for, people looking for good hip hop, it's there. Go find it. Just like any other piece of information, you will have to dig because it's never going to be offered to you. And like Fred Hampton used to say to you, I say peace if you're willing to fight for it.